Texas, the state capital of the great state of Texas. But it's time for afternoon baseball here on LHN. The Lamar Cardinals come to play on the Texas Longhorns. Good afternoon, everybody. Keep along along with Greg Swindell. To introduce sort of this Longhorn team coming in at 4-0, playing good baseball, but boy, it's made an impact by the new guys that have come into this. There are 14 new guys, and a lot of them are making contributions. Well, when you have to, when you have a good start to the season like Texas has, you have to get contributions from newcomers, and Texas has definitely had that. The 4-0 start, best since 2009 when they started 11-0, but you have to get contributions from, we worried about the middle infield. We worried about Trey Faltin and Brendan Dixon. They've been doing well at the plate. They've been able to use the entire field. We saw Trey Faltin doing Salas Arduan goes the other way and cam williams the same thing he comes in and contributes get an opposite field double and broke the game open last night to start out like texas has you don't know until the lights come on what's going to happen but the newcomers have done well yeah and then to end it this young left-hander too uh, pete hansen has been outstanding you can see the numbers right here they've hit the ball out of the ballpark they've been good on the mound and the other part of it is that last one that you worry about the most Defense is so important at the collegiate level. They played good defense. Yeah, they've been as well. able to handle the bat really well, but you, you're exactly right. How can they play defense in Texas? The newcomers have done extremely well. And when you look at the Lamar Cardinals under the direction of Will Davis in his fourth year, uh, this is a team, you know, for years they've been coming to town, and Will Davis in his fourth year said, Hey, we're young. Well, this is not a young baseball team anymore. They are a veteran club. They know how to play. They got eight returning starters, and they're off to a good start. Yeah, they are. Like you said, the veteran guys always help, and one veteran that's really helping them out this year, starting off the season real well, is Carlos Correa's little brother right there. Turned down the Astros pick in 2018, off to a big start, playing third base tonight. They expect big things out of him this year. Well, you look at this ball game. We weren't even sure we were going to get it in. The time moved up with all the activities going on on the 40 acres uh, this week. It is a really tough day to play. You mentally had to be mentally tough to play in weather conditions like we have today. Yeah, they, neither team took batting practice on the field. Texas in the new facility, Lamar in the cages on the concourse, but it's not easy. You got you, you have to stay loose when you're on the field. You have to move around, keep yourself loose as a pitcher. Pitcher has the easiest job because he's always moving with every pitch. So as, as, a, as a fielder, you got to be moving. The weather's not good today. Well, Will Davis, uh, like you said, in, in our fourth, in his fourth year as the head coach of the Lamar Cardinal and his lineup, uh, you know, when you look at his lineup, it's been productive from top to bottom, but Reese Durant is the guy for me. He, he, he's the guy that's made this thing go at the top of the order. You obviously have career in this lineup, but this is a veteran group. Eight returning starters, and the one that's not returning is a transfer came in from Rice, who had played some at Rice at shortstop. So this is a veteran club for the Lamar Cardinals. Yeah, they bring it in here, and, and Kelby Weiler down there, the one you're talking about from Rice, is the, the Southland Conference Player of the Week. Uh, he's, he's off to a good start. A very veteran team for the Lamar Cardinal coming in on this Wednesday afternoon, and they're going to be facing Colby Kubitschek. See there, two starts last season, making his first start this year, first appearance this year for Texas, coming off a, a slight ankle sprain. He's, they got him back, so now he can get this start tonight, 90 to 92. Really good changeup, but a big competitor on the mound. Not big in stature, but Colby Kubitschek will bring it all at you. Well, you, you know, you're in the process right here, guys, and those folks that have been watching and knowing that college baseball started last Friday night, this is in the middle of, of a stretch where the Longhorns played eight games in 10 days. Uh, so this is in that middle. Well, obviously, this weekend we'll have the games for you. Barzy State comes to town. So it'll be important to get some depth from Kubacek. You would probably think he would be somewhere on a pitch count because of his ankle. But I would think you're trying to get three out of him. Yeah, I mean, on a day like this, you, you had a good one last night. Just three pitchers uh, pitched the, the, the game for Texas. So Colby can give you give you three. I mean, with pitch count, could get it, get into four. Throw strikes, get ahead, and might see some more newcomers in this ball game come out of that bullpen. Yeah, you see DJ Petrinsky behind the plate. It's good to see a senior guy coming back. He has really been a great influence to this pitching staff. Uh, you know, he, he's a guy that. You know, he's, he's battled so much to get back, but he brings to the table is just the leadership. He has control of the game, and it, it's been very noticeable having him back behind the plate. Yeah, he's a, you know, when, when you get injured uh, as a senior and if things aren't going right, you could always get down on yourself. DJ's worked his way back, and now he's back in the starting lineup. Avery George steps in. First pitch misses down and away, and we're underway. You can see the moisture coming down. It is a light, misty rain. 
We're very fortunate to get this thing started. Pretty well to center, playable for Hutto. Underneath, puts it away for the first out of the inning. Doug Hutto's first opportunity in the outfield. Comes in on that one, good speed. Excellent. You think putting yeah. the freshman out there, you might lose some speed with just experience is all you're losing out there, but this still one of the fastest outfields in baseball, college baseball. S sophomore from Jasper, down in the Golden Triangle. And steps in, first pitch in there for a strike. Off to a great start, five hits, he's driven in four, scored a couple of times. Rips this ball by. Zubia into the corner. Could this go for three bases? Here comes the turn. Could be a relay to third. Not in time. A one-out triple. Reese Dern. Well, he ripped this ball by Zubia. Yeah, good fastball by Kubicek. Durant showing you the, the ability to drop the hands, got the barrel on it. Once it got over Zubia, it was two at least. Picks up the coach. Coming all the way. Second triple of the year for Durant. Swing and a miss as Coker steps in. Cole, the DH. Huffman, Texas. He's a senior. 6'3", 196 pound seniors. He steps in. The bender right there. Now quickly ahead. This is when you have a strikeout in your arsenal and you need it. Yeah, he's got he's got the good run on the fastball. That one right there kind of cut back. I look for him to run something away right here. You were right. It was just out. One and two to Coker. Sometimes, especially early in games, if you've been hurt in, it's hard to come right back in there. If you come in, you come in off the plate for effect. Downstairs, nice job by DJ to knock it down. Count evens now at two and two. It's probably the hardest misty rain we've seen here since we've been here today. Got him. Good off-speed pitch. Had him out in front over the top of it. That's the good changeup we talked about from Kubicek. Really good arm speed. Comes out of his hand, looks just like a fastball. Look at the depth right there at the end. Got him out in front. Yeah. He's right over the top of it. J.C. Correa will step in. Off to a fantastic start. Seven hits on the season. He's driven in two. RBI situation here. Downstairs. Nice job again. Keep that ball in front. Every time a ball hits this turf today, they're going to go through some baseballs. Because it's... Yeah, it's filthy out here right now. It's uh, it's going to be slick sli sliding, too. We may have somebody overslide a bag today. We saw Duran when he went in head first. Nice job again. Keeping that in front. That's like driving in a run. He, he, Craig is a pitcher. Uh, Kubacek did something right there. Oh, yeah, I think he needs the rosin bag. Might not have had a very good grip, but rosin bag is going to sit out there, too, and get a little moist. Because the way he stands on the left hander, your glove might be able to shield the, the rain coming down, but he's right handed, so the open web is facing the way the rain's coming down. So as the ball's in the glove, so you got mostly the top of the hand there. Tough to get a grip. It is. And when you put rosin and moisture together, it's so sticky. It gets sticky. <laughs> the 2 0. Upstairs, don't lollipop this in three and oh, it could have a green light here. In there for a strike, Mike Morris working at home. Jason Millsap at first. Jet Milton out at second. Wovacek, Thomas Wovacek down at third.
Yeah. Stairs ball four. Well, if anything, with the runner on third, three good stops by DJ behind the no plate. No doubt. Really have to stay down on it. Don't think the ball's going to hop up much with the wet turf. It's more of a scoot. That'll bring Chase Kemp to the plate, first baseman. Big strong left-handed hitter. Nederland in the Golden Triangle, not far from Lamar University. 6'1", 200-pounder. It's downstairs. Two for eight on the year, he's driven in a run. Catches the outside corner. Another off speed right there by Colby. Texas has been outstanding, Greg, in these scenarios all season long. I know it's just the fifth ball game. They've held opponents to four for 29 with runners in scoring position. That's a really good number. The 1-1. One, one. Right at the knees. That's perfect location. At the knees, has some downward angle on it. Throwing downhill. And now you have them aware that you have that good changeup. You could sneak the fastball in or just go with your bread and butter, that changeup. Yeah, going through the signs in case of first and third double steal situation. Cooper check. Toes the rubber. Downstairs. The count goes even. She shook off the fastball in right there and wanted the changeup. Has a good feel for it. That one just held on to it a little long. Chop foul. Skate save. I like those skate saves. Keep the ball from going down the left field wall. Didn't feel as good as he hoped. <laughs> I don't know that I would have put my ankle out from one of them on a cold day like today. No way. Popped up in the infield. Staley with a beat on it. Ooh, puts it away to end the inning. The Cardinals threaten, but do not score. We go to the bottom of the first. Longhorns on the direction David Pierce going out to coach third base. His lineup looks like this. And you know what? It's been a mixture. He, you know, but the guys at the top have moved around a little bit. Duke Ellis with a day off today. But when you look at what Trey has done, he's really done a good job hitting in the middle of the lineup as a true freshman. I've been able to handle the bat well. His first knock as a Longhorn was a home run last night. Was able to fight one off and shoot it to right field. Got a home run, four, four RBIs on the season. And they'll be facing the left-hander, Ransky. And you look at this interesting story. I mean, Longhorn fans will enjoy this. Uh, Roscoe Johnson, who was the quarterback at Port Natchez Groves, this is his left tackle and had an opportunity to play college football, Division I college football, but wanted to play baseball and stayed at home at Lamar. Yeah, Coach Will Davis saying he, he takes that mentality, football mentality out on the mound with him. You see his size. We say he's 6'3", 245, but talking to Coach Davis, it's a little more than that and can field his position for a big man. So he's got good feet, moves around well. So I would think to, today... Both these teams, Lamar goes down for a weekend series at Texas State for the weekend. So, you know, they've got a lot of baseball left to play. Texas, obviously, with Boise State coming to town. I think we could see a lot of pitching today from both sides, a lot of different pitchers. But they would probably like to limit both these guys' starters to about three innings. Yeah, I mean, in the conditions. I mean, even, even when you have your number one out there, it might not be four or five innings. So conditions can, can tell you one thing. With all the ball games, unusual for a lot of these ball games in such a short amount of time early in the season. Austin Todd steps in, the senior from Round Rock, in the leadoff position. Rips this ball right at the second baseman. Burloff 
puts it away. Can't hit it much harder than Austin hit that one. And it played slightly up the middle and went right to Burloff there at second base. That brings the sophomore from Florida. Tampa to be exact. 5'11", 200 pound sophomore, Eric Kennedy. Off to a little bit of a slow start. Leading hitter as a freshman last year for this Longhorn baseball team, 3'10". Preseason, all Big 12 selection. But you, just knowing Eric, he'll get going. He's too good an offensive player. Well, he's, he's that and, and he knows, understands his speed. He, he can use his speed to his advantage. He'll, he'll bunt a lot because he, you can know it's, I mean, you've got the third baseman playing in, the pitcher's aware that he's already squared around twice. He will use that speed as for his favor. Well, you, you can see where it's made Burloff the second baseman play. I mean, he has shortened the field so much, it's like he's drawn in because of his speed. That's not gonna feel good. Well, you know, three, anytime three and zero, oh, you're probably gonna take it, but you're not really prepared for it to be behind your back. So a one-out base runner for the Horns. Yeah, that, that, that's shoulder blade right there. A lot of players are wearing their protective wrist guard or bicep guard on that front shoulder. You don't. Not ready for the one on the back. I don't think you can wear one on your shoulder blade. <laughs> Zubia steps in. He's driven in seven. He's homered on the season. 231 is his average. For the junior from Richmond. 6'4, 230 pounds. Really done an outstanding job at first base. Too something we'll have to talk about as the day goes on. He's been really good over there. He has. And not playing that position much. It was out there a little bit last year, but handling it this year. Upper part of the zone for a strike. Count evens at one and one. Cardinals at double play depth in the infield. There goes the runner. Little hit and run. Bounce foul. We'll do it at one and two. Conditions the way they are. Put the ball on the turf. Never know what will happen. You got to take a little extra time as a fielder to throw the ball because the ball's going to be moist when you pick it up. The big lefty set. Off speed outside. Count evens at two and two. Kennedy on first. He's, he's doing the slide step is Renicki. You really have to get that hand out of the glove sooner on a breaking ball. A lot of times with the slide step, you tend to lag with your arm, and that's what happened there. Good swing, fouled it straight back. Had a good hack at that one. Did Zubia. We'll do it over at two and two. Texas fell behind last night to UTSA, two nothing. Put a five spot on the board in the fifth. Came away with a 6-2 victory. But then their previous three victories before that, they jumped on the board and took an early lead. Trying to do that here. And game five of the season. Slide step, foul right side, back out of play. Pretty good play over there. Got a souvenir. Yeah, and the conditions came down straight down. One hop. Got it. He's trying to find a young man to give the ball away to for a souvenir. Seventh pitch of the at bat coming here. This could be two. Burloff to second for one, the relay to first. Not in time, couldn't turn it. Burloff couldn't get it out of his glove, couldn't get that transition. Both, both Burloff and Weiler, Weiler, both kind of double clutching with the wet conditions. 
Zach get contact right there. He gets a good feed, but right there, just yeah. couldn't get a grip on it. Allowed Zach to get the first. That's a nice job by Zubia. Just keep hustling. That's a good note for young players. You think, oh, I just hit into a double play. Keep hustling because you never know what might would happen. And keeps the inning alive. Petrinsky, who steps in. A couple of doubles in his last start. He's driven in a run. From Magnolia in the Houston area, six foot 195 pound senior. And boy, it's good to have him back. Left side, Correa, across the diamond in time. Longhorns get a base runner, but come up empty. We're through one. Nothing, nothing game. Spall on Longhorn Network is presented by Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Downtown Austin, Texas. As we go to the top of the second, glad you're with us here on LHN. It is a very moist, cool, in fact, cold, it'd be a better word, afternoon or afternoon baseball here on LHN. Fans having to bundle up, trying to stay dry. Nothing, nothing game as we go to the top of the second. Kubasek out for his second inning of work. And he'll be facing carry on. So it is the six, seven, and eight hitters due for Lamar. Anthony from Quebec. Guarantee you, he's, he's pretty used to playing in this kind of weather. Summer day. I played in the minor leagues in Quebec City, Canada in June, and it snowed. <laughs> on looking for his first knock of the season as he steps in he's their everyday third baseman but he's also their backup catcher behind the plate today good breaking ball right there nice little tight wouldn't really call that a slider more of a cutter same action yeah. pretty good velocity as well oh two on the ground Diving to his left, Staley, can he come up with it and make a play? He cannot. There's a good stop, just get to it. It is going to scoot today because of the moisture on the turf. Just that little scoot, you can see it. Just, he was anticipating a hop, and it scooted all the way to him. I think that's a base hit. A tough play in the conditions. I believe it does go down as a base hit. Logan Burloff, Burloff steps in. One for four on the season. He scored a run and driven in a run. Catches the outside corner. From McKinney, Texas in the Metroplex. 5'11", 185 pound senior. Good command right now. In and out. Got a feel for it. After the, the rain mist has, has slowed down a little bit. Be able to, to get a better grip on the ball. That one ran back good. The 0 2 just gets a piece of it. I believe Mike Morris paid, paid the price for that. You're an umpire. You can't. It, <laughs> it's got to be weird when the ball comes off the foul tip and you, you're not expecting to get hit. You got a guy catching and think, well, I'm protected. Well, they take a lot of abuse back there. And they got a lot of gear on, too. 0-2 oh, again. Made a mistake, left that one up, got away with it. Last two, one ran back over the plate, got away with it. That one ran enough in for him to yank it foul. Trying to go away here. I like that cutter, I like the slider. Carry on with his lead from first. Upstairs. Now one and two. Yeah. 
There's that slider you were talking about right there. You know that one's going to stay away. And when you have a, hit, a hitter aware, hey, he can bring the fastball back. You're thinking it might come back this way, but goes the other way on you and gets a good swing and miss. Wilder will step in. Kelby. Off to a good start. He's got seven knocks this season. He's driven in four. Seven for 11, scored a run, double and a triple. Got a 1,500 OPS right now. Off to a great start. Off the end of the bat, only play is to first. One three on the put out. And a runner into scoring position for Lamar. Keeping the ball away good. The slider has been really his, his best pitch so far. Able to command it, got a good feel for it. Gerard will step in. Cole. Looking for his first hit of the season. Groves, Texas. Senior center fielder. Downstairs, good job again by DJ to keep that in front. Dangerous pitch right here. You're 2 0, left handed hitter at the plate. If he can get that change up close again, I know you're, the count, you don't want to go 3 0, but you got a guy looking for his first hit, could get aggressive and get an out with something out of the zone. Hit well. Dixon has the play on it. And that ends the inning. Trey Faltini will be coming to the plate. He'll be leading it off as we get to the bottom of the second. Nothing, nothing ball game. Welcome to nothing, nothing ball game as we go to the bottom of the second inning and leading it off will be the true freshman, Trey Faltini, from Richmond, Texas, a member of the 18 and under national team. He's been outstanding so far this season defensively. And the other thing, he's made his hits pay off. They have, he's driven in some runs and some big runs already. Four RBIs on the season for Trey Faltini. But more impressed. Again, as an ex-pitcher, the, the defense that he's played so far through four games. Not only has he made the routine pay, play so far, he's made that exceptional play to go with it. So it'll be five, six, seven due here. Minsky out for his second inning of work. And what is a very moist afternoon it really hasn't rained hard in austin in two days but it's been a mist constant for about 40 hours first pitch in there for a strike trey steps back in Stairs. One one. Didn't get the call. Two one delivery. This is outside. Longhorns looking for a leadoff base runner. Nicky's been falling behind. Texas unable to catch up with him so far, but they'll get another base runner. You 
know, you you worry about the, the only dirt part of the field, Greg, is around the mound here at UFC or Dish Fog Field. So, and they're going back there. You can see there's a scraper back there. They're trying to get their cleats cleaned. It, it, it's your footing more than anything else to me. It, I felt like watching guys pitch if they couldn't get their feet right. Yeah, so far it seems with, with the weather we've had, it hasn't been much of a problem, but you always, that's the, the main thing. The, Last thing you want in the back of your mind is that it's slipping a little bit. Why don't you pull a muscle, stretch your arm out. A lot of things can go bad. A quick visit right here. As just one of the six hitters, he's thrown a first pitch strike to. Yeah, he's been behind. Yeah. Sean Snedeker, the pitching coach, out to has a visit with his left hander. Another thing besides the footings, all is, is with with the the rain. I mean, is, is the ball wet? Do you, can you get a good grip with the wind too? That's why you, Colby Kubitschek asked for that rosin bag. Like you said, you mix that with a little bit of the the rain or sweat off your your body. It can get some good stick to it. Gives you a better feel. Wind blowing in almost dead out of the northeast today, so it's dead in from center. Not near as firm as it was last night. Ball carrying a little better today than it did last night, but still a good day to pitch if you can hit, get somebody to hit it in the air. It's not going to go that far. Cam Williams getting a chance from the right side. Saw him last night a couple times from the left side. Switch it and Cam Williams. Up and away and it's 3-0. Now you miss seven times in a row. It's starting to get in your head a little bit. Well, they got a righty up in the pen. Jack Dallas getting loose for Lamar. In there for a strike. Altini runs well. Could be one of those scenarios where you put him in motion, but it's hard to put guys in motion when the guy's struggling to throw strikes. I'd like to see him go 3-2 first before yeah. I would do that. And he does, comes right back. Now you can see Faltini in motion here. If he throws another one right there, he might do is a it, lot of running. Yeah, well, as a hitter, I'm looking fastball here. Way back to the screen, ball four, back to back walks. Texas with something going here in the second. There's Jack Dallas, the righty, probably with this situation, getting ready as soon as he can. Offensive timeout by Texas as David Pierce talks to Doug Hodo. I think early in this game with this kind of situation, this is the scenario that you see David Pierce spun a lot. Yeah. First and second. He, he, likes to, he likes to bunt with runners on first and second. You yeah. got a freshman up who has one hit on the season, a home run at Rice. A couple times on last night with walks. And can really run if he gets the bunt down. Oh. Puts it in the right spot, but he will not face Mr. Renicki. And we're going to have a pitching change here. Jack Dallas will be coming into the game. You know, We'll tell you the new pitcher when we come back. Don't forget to stay right here with us on LHN right after the men's baseball game. We go to men's basketball across the street as interstate rival TCU at 7 Central Live from the Irwin Center. Like everything else, it's available on the ESPN app so you can watch it anywhere, anytime. The new pitcher, right-hander, Jack Dallas, young man from West Orange Stark High School in Orange, Texas, 5'11", 199 pound junior. Yeah, inning and a third on the season so far, just giving up one hit, a couple strikeouts, making his second appearance for Lamar. Comes on here at the bottom of the second inning, back-to-back -back walks. What very easily could be a bunt situation as we were talking about. Especially 
with the way the the field's playing because of the moisture, you get a bunt down, you got a great chance to get a knock right here. Well, Doug Hutto has, gets a bunt down anytime. He's got a chance to get a knock with his speed. So yeah, they got the righty now probably falling off to the first base side. Third baseman is going to be playing in to read the hands of Doug Hutto. And Correa plays second most of the time playing third today. So it puts a little pressure on him to figure out how to read this ball off the bat. Dallas set. Squares to bunt. Pitches in there for a strike. Now you're trying to bunt the ball to third base. That pitch away from Hodo. Tough to bunt down that third base line. Dallas set. Breaking ball. Did he pull it back? Yes, he did. Nice job by Kirion to keep that ball in front of him. And the count evens. The 1 1. Inside step move. Well, that inside step move to see if Hodo would show, and he, he was showing right there. Kemp will be charging from first. Nips the outside corner, now one and two. I would think the bun is off now. If you take it off, yeah, you're obviously swinging, but if you leave it on, now you just got to get the ball into fair territory. Yeah, because the infield will back up, not anticipating the bunt. You can see Kemp and Correa both now back even with the bag. Nice job. That was a 58 footer. Wasn't going to get that one close. Well, you want to smother it. Kirion does a nice job getting out. He knows he's got to get out in front of it. Get your body. See the forward lean. Young catchers. That's the reason the ball came back out in front of him because he's got his upper body bent over. If you get straight up, you can go out and block. But if your head's back and your neck's back, you, the ball's going to can carry him away from you. Nice job again. Work the count full. All the breaking balls have been in the dirt. Fastballs that Hodo took have been fastballs running back over the outer half. But think we might see that here, 3 2. I don't see how he can go to a breaking ball here. The payoff. He did. He did go to the breaking ball. But he also walked him. That's a great at bat by Doug right there. Asked to bunt, take a couple strikes, and then really saw the break. I mean, that's a tough one to lay off because that break ball's on the plate. Tough one to lay off. Corners will come to the plate. They'll play for two in the middle. Does Lamar. As Brendan Dixon steps in. From Argyle in the Ditton County area. Six 195-pound freshman. Catches the outside corner with a fastball, does Dallas. Four free passes for Texas. Got a hit batter by Kennedy, and then three walks in this inning, looking for their first base hit. The 0-1. Off of the fist. Quickly, it's no balls and two strikes to Dixon. A lot of movement on the fastball. Go to Greg when you as a pitcher right there as a catcher you call a break ball but you've got to make that pitch look like a strike when it left Dallas's hands it was not a strike yeah. I mean in early season conditions a lot of a lot of things can go with that but you're, you're exactly right you want it to be around the plate 
is like you talk about sometimes wasting no two pitches up in the zone it's the same way with a breaking ball it has to be presentable at least to yeah, try it, to get an off you know young pitchers want to throw oh, i need to throw a high fastball here but you need it over the plate yep. to, to make it even look like a strike the one two got him with a breaking ball a big strikeout right there first for jack dallas that's coming into the game that one more had a little more loop to it, like he wanted to control this one and, and make it be over the plate like we were just talking about. That one, he didn't try to bury it. Had Dixon out in front. Murphy Staley will step in. It's Homer, driven in a run, 250 on the year. Double play depth in the infield. Looking for two to get out of it. Fouls this ball back. And if you're Texas on the other side of that, you got to take advantage of three consecutive walks. You got to find a way to score here. Yeah, put the ball in place somehow, somewhere. The 0 1. Swing and a miss on a good breaking ball. Quickly. Staley down 0 2. You know, Kirion is, is their everyday third baseman catching today, but he, he looks very comfortable behind the plate. He's done a nice job keeping the ball in front. You have, yeah, as a pitcher, too, you have to have the confidence that I can bury this pitch and confidence in my catcher that he's going to stop it. When that little bit of confidence goes out of your mind, that's when you tend to hang the ball yep. over the plate. Or, or don't get all the way yeah. out to, to make it break. Dallas set. One, two. Got a piece of it. Keeps the bat alive. It's got a good sinking fastball, though. You're, a lot of times you're thinking about one ground ball right here to have a chance to get out of the inning. The one, two, just gets a piece of it. Every pitch Dallas has thrown since coming in the game has been pressure packed. He hasn't had that. I mean, <laughs> bases have been loaded. I mean, it's been every pitch he's made has Trying been not to have did Hodo bunt. And, yeah. Yeah, it's been um, a pressure inning for him. He, like we go back to the confidence in your catcher right here. This is where you, you bury one and try to get. Murphy Staley to chase one. Kirion did his job. Now the count 2-2. Two, two. Tried to go with the heater, missed with it upstairs. Now it's 3-2 again. Well, we've seen the breaking ball. I mean, if he has the confidence just to get the breaking ball over the plate. I think he could get the strike. Though. See what he goes to here. Longest at bat of the game right now. Eighth pitch of the at bat here. Got him. Went to that breaking ball. And it wasn't on the plate. It was away. And Murphy Staley tries to protect, make contact, but just unable to catch up with it. Had him out in front. Back to back strikeouts with the bases loaded. Not out of it yet is Jack Dallas. He has to face the top of the order and Austin Todd. Todd is 0 for 1 in this one. Lined out his first time up. First pitch in there for a strike with the fastball. Advantage Dallas with the breaking ball. You get ahead now. Now you can expand the zone. Good speed on the bases for Texas. They've had them loaded with nobody out. Now loaded with two outs. Yeah. 
That's the one that can get away from you. You call breaking ball as a catcher, you're instantly know it's you've got a chance to bounce. But when you call fastball, you just don't anticipate it. And he was very fortunate that ball stayed in front. And uh, unusual that the fastball hopped up on him. You expect the fastball to, to scoot. scoot, like we said earlier. 1-1 one, one to Todd. Hit well into the gap. This could go for extra bases, and it does. This should score three. Hodo really motoring to the plate. Three-run double, Austin Todd, 3 nothing Texas. Jack Dallas was making pitches when he had to, but this one right here is all right out over the plate, belt high. Great job right there by Austin Todd going with it. Hit that ball well. Gets over Gerard out there in the center. And with Hodo's speed, he's going to score easily in Texas. Gets the three on the board. Uh, it's just really difficult to get through a bases loaded, nobody out scenario. You strike the first two guys out, and then finally you make a mistake, and it costs you. Todd made him pay. Kennedy steps in, fouls this ball off. Three runs on one hit in the inning. Texas now with a 3-0 lead. First hit of the ball game for Texas, a big one. Oh, 1 to Kennedy. On the ground, Correa has it. Throws across the diamond in time, and that ends the inning. Not before damage done by the Longhorns. They come up with a three spot on an opposite field. Three run double. Austin Todd hits it out into the gap. The runners are off. Texas with three. They lead three nothing. Back to UFCU Dish Falk Field. Top of the third. Longhorns just put a three spot on the board. Opposite field. Three run double from Austin Todd, Keith Mullins, Greg Swindell. Glad you're with us. Kubacek now staked to a three nothing lead as he comes back. It'll be the top of the order due for Lamar. As George steps in, first pitch breaking ball now. Much different going back out now for your third inning work when you look at the board and you got a three nothing lead. Three nothing lead now, 35 pitches for Colby Kubacek. To his left. Tini in time did a nice job. You know, it is difficult to fill the ball today with the moisture. You really got it. You saw Faltini right there really take his time and get that grip in his hand. You almost got to put your whole hand around it sometimes. And got to it in time and then checked the runner. Knew he did not have to rush too much and got a good grip. Made a good throw. Tripled his last time up. Duran, step in. To a fantastic start. From the left side. Or rips this ball. Nice diving play, though, by Dixon. Takes away a base hit. Ball hooking away from Dixon right there. Seemed played slightly pulled, a little deep on that second. Kept his eye on it. Saved a base hit. Really good play. Two quick outs now. As Coker steps in. Struck out his first time up, which at that point of the ball game was a big part after the one out triple. It's a new baseball. It's the ball's fault. Always is. I've been there. I've blamed on the ball many times. You say that, but in reality, you and I both have talked about some balls feel different. In they your do. Hand. They do. Especially when you throw two straight balls with it. No. <laughs> different ball. Same, same result. result. It's mental right now. You got two quick outs. You try to get that third out quick and just kind of stop thinking for a little bit. But this one's right down the middle.
And there you go. Carrera waits on deck. Downstairs, ball four. Those are the ones that you go back when his start is over, he'll go back and look at probably the replay of this and watch, you know, how the ball came out of his hands and what he's doing. That's got to be one here saying, what was I think? I got two quick outs and I don't even get close on four pitches. Well, that's, you just, yeah, you lose your train of thought. You got the outs. You're like, I got a three-run lead. Now if I can just get our guys back in there. and Up the middle, Maltini gets to it, tries to make a play to Dixon. I think he had a better chance of going to first base right there. Really nice job to get to it, but it was really hard to get it to Dixon in time. And it, he had already passed up Brendan Dixon. He tries to flip it back as Brendan Dixon's trying to find second base. Probably would have been a lot easier right there to go to first. Goes his E6. So now all of a sudden, tying run at the plate. As Kemp will st step in. Popped up to end the first. Off speed in there for a strike. The 0 1. He's getting a really good lead out there but with one strike you got a couple outs I would concentrate on the guy in the box if he wants to go and make the third out of third let him you know, Texas pitching has been outstanding with runners in scoring position though it, it just third time in the ball game in three innings they've had a runner in scoring position but they the pitching's just been so good in that scenario all season long I think they've only allowed they're four for 31 our opponents in with runners in scoring position you're going to win a lot of games when that happens when your pitching can do that this is downstairs and it's one and two Kemp digs back in. Cooper check comes set. Just misses inside. I like the the effort though. The two seamer. It came back. Yeah. It came back right at the end. Watch where DJ set up and look right at the end. Right there floats right back over the inner half. Easily could have been called a strike. Kemp had no chance to get to it. You got to collect yourself. You wanted that one. You thought you had your pitch. Yep. And you got to repeat it. Chop foul. 49th. Next pitch will be 50 for Kubacek. Could be reaching that pitch total we were talking about. There's activity in the Texas bullpen right now. I believe it looked like Owen Meany down there. There he is, big right-hander on the right. Dawson Merriman with the sweatshirt on, playing a little toss. Downstairs. Runners will be in motion here. Advantage Lamar. Right-hander set. Runners will be off. Good change up out in front over the top. Gets the strikeout he needed right there to get out of the inning. Three nothing Texas. We take a look around the Big 12 in the preseason poll. Obviously, I think everybody was looking at Texas Tech as being probably the team to beat. 
Zeke, but, uh, you know, you look at Oklahoma State, yeah, I, I felt like that they did lose an awful lot, and they're off to a rough start. Yeah, they, well, they went out and they beat uh, Arizona State last night 2-1, to one, so got a late-night win out there. The Josh Holliday's got it going, but Tech, not only do they have the hitting, they got three pretty good starting pitchers in Lubbock this year, so they're going to be tough to beat. You look at that, and, of course, West Virginia, team that sort of snuck up on everybody last year. I, I, I don't look at them as the seventh best team in the in the conference. I, I, somebody gave them a first place vote, and I, I would think they're a, an upper tier team too. Tough team to beat. We go to the bottom of the third. It'd be Zach Zubia to lead it off. Texas three runs on a hit have committed a miscue for Lamar. No runs, two hits, no miscues. Jack Dallas out for his first full inning of work. Actually, he got a full inning of work because he came on first and second, nobody out last inning. But gave up the two out opposite field two run double to Austin Todd in Texas with a three nothing lead. Zach reached on a fielder's choice his first time up. Breaking ball catches the outside corner for strike one. Sort of unusual scheduling for Texas this year. Texas plays their la off the last weekend of conference play, which is a little bit unusual with finals being late, a little bit later. Uh, it's unusual to look at that, that the 12th of May you know, you don't have any games for eight days until the conference tournament. Wow. Hasn't happened for Texas, has it? Mm -hmm. be a, some inner squad going on. Eight day layoff in between the last scheduled regular season game and Big 12 tournament. Well, you make the tournament, you'll be rested. You'll be able to set everybody up. That's exactly right. One and two to Zubia. Goes with it the other way, hits it well. Nice running catch and right by George. That's a, that's a nice jump by Avery George. Had him played that direction. You don't see that very often. Not with Zach. Not with Zuby at the plate. Nice running catch by George. Hit it good, ran it down good. Good, good, good job of making really good contact right there by Zuby. DJ steps in. Grounded to third his first time up. Two fifty on the season as he steps in. Out to second. In time and two quick outs for the Longhorns here in the third. Baltini will come to the plate. He walked and scored. Back in the second. It's interesting. I watched Trey after the mistake he made defensively in last inning and he, he immediately he was very calm about it and knew that hey I've got to go on to first base that's just a learning experience to understand hey go ahead keep going my momentum was carrying me to yep. first base and you know you get better scouting reports once you get down the year two because you know obviously you don't know the speed of all the runners but you will as the season goes on when he got to that ball soon enough and the biggest thing was the momentum was taking him one way and Dixon the other way. Yeah. It was 2 0 now to Trey. Taking all the way, and it's 2 and 1. Baseball all weekend long. Here on LHN as the Boise State Broncos come to Austin, swings over the top of it. First season of Division I baseball since 1980. We're trying to think. You were winning the World Series in 1980. I sure was. Right? <laughs> yes, I was. I think I, I, think I was in um, was ninth, ninth grade. Been a while since they had baseball in Boise. It's a heck of a story. There, 
new facility under construction. That was a few years ago. The payoff pitch fouled off. We'll do it again, 3-2. Seventh pitch of the at bat coming. Dallas set. Right at the top of the zone, gets the strikeout. One, two, three, goes Texas. In the third, third of the game in the books. Texas out in front, three nothing after the strikeout. Three nothing ball game as we go to the top of the fourth and the Longhorns go to the bullpen. Get a right hander, a sophomore, Owen Meany. This is his first appearance of 2020. Yeah, big right hander, just six appearances last year, but good size, good fastball by Owen Meany and a really good, what we call up here sometimes, that Bugs Bunny changeup. Good changeup from Owen Meany. Coming out here in his first appearance of the season. 6'5", 235 pounds, sophomore from Houston. Close the book on Kubacek. Went three innings. He was on a, a, a pitch count, so to speak, uh, you know, coming back from an ankle injury. And There's Colby right there. Three innings, 51 pitches, 32 which were strikes. The two hits, two walks, and three strikeouts. Got a hit of 9 of 14 that he faced. And now we'll put the sweatshirt on and watch his teammates go to work. Curion will lead it off. Anthony. Base hit is first time up. Meany's first delivery. I got it. Well, not anymore. Not with the new screen behind the yeah. plate. You're not going to get anything coming back here in our booth. Forgot about that new taller screen. Let's see the new screen. Protective all the way down the baseline, swinging a miss here and quickly. Meany out in front, no balls and two strikes. The speed differential is so good. If he can just get it around the plate, you saw how far out in front the hitter was right there, and then he sunk it right under his bat for strike three. And you see this for me right here, it's in slow motion. Now watch the ball come out of his hand with the arm speed as the hitter. I'm looking at arm speed, and I think the ball's coming. Now, you can see in slow motion how he kind of pronated, yeah, kind of pronated, turned it over just, a little bit. You can't see that as a hitter. No. Though. And it's all about arm speed. It looks just like the fastball. This is outside, raining a little harder now than it has yes, it any time during the day. Downstairs. 2-0. and oh. It's such a mental game anyway, but then all of a sudden you throw elements into it. Really got to keep your concentration right now. Chop foul. Two and one. I don't know if he's got anybody he can hand that souvenir to. Not in that section. <laughs> nope. On the ground. Tini with it. In time. Two quick outs for Meany who's coming into the game. Weiler will step in. Not favorable conditions. Your teammates love you if you get the ball over the plate and throw strikes. Especially get off that field. Especially the outfielders, because Kennedy hadn't had a ball in his direction all day. <laughs> Pitch there, bottom of the zone for a strike. Oh for one, but off to a great start. As the Cardinal shortstop. Offensive player of the week. Not too shabby. Up 
upstairs. And it's two and one. With that breaking ball meaning, he looks like he's, he's trying to force it. When I say forcing it, he's really burying that front shoulder and head goes with it. Instead of letting his natural arm motion go with it, like his changeup. He's just got tremendous arm speed with his changeup. I go right back to it. 2-2. Two -two. He does on the ground. Staley has it. So the first in time. One, two, three. Goes Lamar here in the fourth. Three nothing Texas. Jim and Joanne are here. Three nothing Texas as we go to the bottom of the fourth and out of the bullpen. Third pitcher of the day for Lamar is Douglas Palmer. 6'4", 205 pound right hander from Denton, Texas. From under. And he it's is down there. Sidearm sinker slider has one inning on the season and three strikeouts in that one inning. He comes into the game here and it is an adjustment when the guy changes that arm slot that far. When you get that low, does sometimes it seems like the ball, the fastball is rising sometimes? I mean, it, it can't, I know, but you know, when you when you try to elevate in the zone, it seems like it's going to be have to go up. And uh, Quisenberry. Yeah. To Colby. To Colby. And the Colby threw much harder than Quisenberry. I played with a young man named Young Young Kim in Arizona who threw 95 from down there. Yeah. That's no fun. Cam Williams, he walked and scored his first time up. The DH for the Longhorns. So been a couple of runs last night with an opposite field double. In the DH roll today. Breaking ball, almost hit him inside. You can see Cam smiling right there. He said, I got to turn into that one. That's what he's thinking to himself. But, but it's instinct to get out of the way. Sure it is. No matter how hard it is, fastball or curveball. Chop foul. One and one to Cam. Long pause. You know, left-handers see this ball so much more, and I really felt like guys that really dropped down always changed a little bit to left-handed hitters because they, th they knew that you could see it off of them so well. It's a lot easier to leave it over the plate. Got that one in there. Count evens at two and two. Two and two to Williams. Upstairs. That's the one I'm talking about. Just like it kind of has that yeah, rise it to does. it. Over the plate, that would be one to, hard to lay off of. And you can't get on top of it. Yeah. The payoff to Williams. Ripped on his horse, cutting it off. Big turn. Ball comes out of his hands. Now Williams will head to second base. Well, George did everything he could do to cut it off, and then he got up, and the ball just slipped out of his hands. I mean, that's a smile right there. My gosh, that ball was wet. Went to throw it, slips out. He made a, did a great job of getting to the ball. It goes a long way to get to this, makes a sliding stop. That ball was on the ground the entire way, and it just slips out of his hand. But. Williams did everything he could do. He was going hard, looking for it, and I've got to stop. And then right here, realizes, oh, that ball's away. It moves up to second base. He did a good job of keeping his eye on the play. A lot of, lot of runners, when they get that ball, might turn their back and not notice that they, he dropped the ball and he's not going to get to it. Kept his eye on it and was able to get to second. It's going to be a base hit, and E9 allows him to move up to second base. Right back through the box. Williams coming to the plate. Here comes the throw to the plate. It's cut off. Now they have Hodo in a pickle. 
Lots of throws here. That's <laughs> four of them. Finally get the out. But the base hit gives the Longhorns a 4 nothing lead. You never know what the play is going to, the end result is going to be. Not sure what kind of jump Cam got. So Hodo, uh, not sure if he would got thrown out at home plate. Telling him to get down over there, but Hodo gets caught in the pickle, runs, does score. Boy, when there's this many throws so many times, Greg, the ball gets away and the runner gets tired. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually the runner says, okay. You got me. The Longhorns get an insurance run. Four nothing ball game now. With one out. Dixon steps in, a strikeout victim his first time up. Way inside. New names. Williams with the base hit, gets to second. And then Douglas gets, comes up with his second hit of his, as a Longhorn, drives in a run. A lot of new names. That's that one you were talking about right there. It sort of rises. Yeah, you swing under it, is what Dixon did right there. Dixon digs back in. Palmer's delivery over the top of it again, and quickly it's two and two. Denton, Texas native, Douglas Palmer. Long pause this time. Just missed outside, and the count goes full. Yeah, try that letter high fastball again. They swung through twice. The payoff. Got a piece of it that time. These guys might have seen each other, you know, senior and Argyle is in Denton County. Out toward right, coming on quickly as George, able to make the play for the second out of the inning. So two gone for Murphy Staley as he comes to the plate. Strikeout victim his first time up. Still think the story of Will Swope giving that number for Murphy to wear this season for Coach Out the Belly. Pretty cool. It was pretty cool. This is outside. Staley digs back in. Two and oh. The two oh delivery. Back up the middle. Has it? Flips the first in time, and that ends the inning. But not before the Longhorn score. We come back, we'll have David Pierce. Down in the Longhorn dugout, four nothing Texas. Over Austin, Texas. Glad you're with us. Special afternoon baseball at UFCU Dish Fog Field on a weekday. Wednesday, Wednesday afternoon. Wednesday, baseball. no less. Yeah. Top of the fifth, four nothing Texas. Four runs on three hits, one miscue. For Lamar, no runs, two hits. Have out had opportunities early, but Texas pitching's been really good down the line. We'll take this opportunity. Go down into the Longhorn dugout and visit with head coach David Pierce. Coach, one of the things that jumps off the page is 
you schedule these games, you're not sure what the weather's going to be like. It's 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 a tough day to get mentally prepared, and this is a good test. Uh, no doubt. I mean, pretty emotional, exciting game last night with UTSA, and then bounce right back for an early game. It's a great test for us. Hey, coach, the first uh, last two nights we've talked about all the newcomers, the freshmen, uh, Cam Williams, and I mean all these guys. Your thoughts on on the production they've given you so far this year? Well, another great at bat by Cam, base hit. And, uh, you know, I thought he was a little slow on the turn at third and. You know, Doug was not going any kind of sign from uh, from Coach Miller, but, you know, I could see why he did just because the ball, the hand was up. But, yeah, it's great to see those guys having having some fun and producing. And you know, one of the other things is you've got these arms that you want to get into games. But, uh, you know, I thought I thought Kobe was really good, and Owen's been really good since he came into the game. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, that was great for Kobe because he pitched so well in the Cape, and he just he's been fighting a little bit of an ankle sprain and then bounces back and, you know, he had some adversity, too, in the first inning, and he pitched around it. I mean, really, really good performance uh, for his first outing. Thanks for taking the time to visit. Good luck the rest of the ball game. I right, appreciate it. And Coach David Pierce has Owen Meany out for his second inning of work. These two guys uh, really, it, it tells you a whole lot for me about the game. The game of baseball is a is about rhythm and timing, and when you can throw a change up, if you were teaching baseball, good good one right there, swing and miss. A young pitcher, if you can learn to throw a fastball change up, you can compete it at every level in the game. Kids don't believe that, Zon. Huh? Kids don't believe it. I mean, it's the second best pitch in baseball. It's easier to throw than a curveball, easier to throw than a slider. And it's it's until you get to a certain age, it's easier on your arm. And as a relief pitcher, a starting pitcher, yeah, you might need, need, need another pitch, but as a relief pitcher, you go in there and you can show a good changeup. It's it's not easy to hit. You've tried. I mean, you've hit some and you've missed a lot. Oh, well, I missed a lot. Yeah. Because, it, you know, especially if somebody's got great arm speed with it, back to the top of the order. Meany is just coming in, filling up the zone right now. George, 0 for 2 as he steps in. And the 0 2. Upstairs. Talk about two of the best closers in the game, one through one pitch, Mariano Rivera. And Trevor Hoffman had one of the best changeups in the history ever. of the game. Right. One, the, two here. And that was his second pitch. He threw a fastball and a changeup. Sliding, good effort. You hope he's okay. Pounds, is he okay? Getting up slowly is Zach Zubia. Gave it a great effort. I don't know if he's, I think he hit his knee. Yeah, there's padding at the top, but there's no it's padding down at right the bottom. Slides right here. Yeah, that right knee into that fence and that pole at the bottom of, you can see him right there. Took a blow. Uniforms dirty and all. Still out there, one, two. On the ground. Across the diamond, in time. Tested that knee right away. Yes, it did. 6-3 on the putout. Five in a row retired by Meany since coming into the game. Still wincing out there on that knee. That can't feel good at any time, much less on a full slide with the weather being cold. Trying to get it feeling better. You'll have some ice on that when this is over. Duran steps in. First pitch in there, first strike. He's hit two balls as hard as you can hit him. Tripled, first time up, lined out to Dixon his last time up. The 0 1. Catches the inside corner, filling it up. Five for six, first pitch strikes, but better than that, getting ahead and using that changeup. Might try to do it right here with two strikes. Lift it up, lift it up, pull foul. In the first inning, Reese got a pitch he could handle, and he rifled this into the corner. Just over Zubia's head. Shortest part of the dish out there in right field. You've got to show some wheels to get a trip. Fights off a changeup. Remain 0-2. He wants that changeup down. Get that movement going away from this lefty. Throws him in, though, before. Try to come back in there. Way ahead in the count. 
Almost got him to chase, but he fouled it off. I think you, you can freeze him in. Got to get it down. <laughs> we saw we saw him drop the barrel on a on his triple right there. He wants to go to the changeup. Stayed up. One and two. Seventh pitch of the at bat coming. Good hitters. Fight off tough pitches until you make a mistake. The one two. Full foul. Fifth straight foul ball with an 0 2 count. Ninth pitch of the at bat coming. Since the 0 2 count. Sometimes you just got to try down the middle. Let the hitter get themselves out. One two. Downstairs. DJ, better get that hand out of there. That was close. Don't want to make a perfect pitch here. That's that, sometimes the guys falling off that that many. That, Most DJ's throwing hand. Oof! Kind of came back. Ripped by that Zubia. Can't hit a ball any harder than that. One, two, three. Go the Cardinals. We'll visit with head coach Will Davis when we come back. Okay. Well, Foy home, four and a half in the books, four nothing Texas here. As we go to the bottom of the fifth, we take this opportunity to go down into the Lamar dugout, visit with their fourth year head coach, Will Davis. Coach, you, you, we've talked to you over the last couple of years. I've made trips up here. You talked about being young. Well, you all of a sudden got a ball club now. Looking at the guys coming to the plate, a lot of veteran guys now. Yeah, that's, you're absolutely right. Yeah, and we're, you know we're excited about it. Things aren't going our, exactly our way right now. We still feel like we're in this one. Hey, coach, you, you talk about. You can't guide the ball when it leaves the bat, but Reese Duran has hit three missiles today and has one hit to show for it. Your thoughts on the way he swings the bat for you so far this year? Yeah, he had a good freshman year for us last year, and he's, he's swinging it pretty good, so hopefully he can keep it going. Hey, Coach, the last thing I have, when, when you look at moving guys around in midweek games, you've got Texas State this weekend. I really think that your guy behind the plate has been outstanding, and he's your everyday third baseman. Tell us about that. He is, yeah. Anthony Curion, he's uh, you know, got a lot of offensive potential, had a really good year at the plate last year, and he's uh, got a hit tonight, starting to get going, and uh, he's, you know, got a, he's a jack of all trades. He can catch, he can play third at a high level, and uh, anytime you get a guy like that in your program, it just you know, really helps you out when you, can, when you try to fit pieces into a lineup. You know you can move that guy around and, and uh, adjust others accordingly. Will, thanks for taking the time to visit with. Good luck to rest of the ball game and the rest of the year. Thank you, guys. Will Davis in his fourth year. We got a new pitcher coming in. Marcus Oliveras. Oliveras. Columbus, Texas, 6'3", 190 pounds, just two-thirds of an inning on the season in his only appearance. Did give up a run, a balk, and got a strikeout in that appearance. 71 and... Interstate 10, you've been through there a few times? A uh, few. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Big blow of the ball game by Austin Todd as he steps in here. His last time up. Three run double to right center. Separated the game with two outs. He's driven in four on the year now. Tried to check his swing, fouled off, and the count evens at one and one. In the second inning, got a fastball up and out of the plate, Greg. And, well, it's a big blow in this game. Yeah, Jack Dallas had struck out a couple with the bases loaded. Gets this one airborne to right. Going back is George. What a play up against the wall. Outstanding catch by Avery George right there. <laughs> That's a big time play. Take away extra bases from Austin Todd. Yeah, had to go a long way to get this one, but keeps with it right there, and it's behind him as he reaches the wall. That's a lot of concentration. See the eyes always on the ball. And with the breeze took it back away, but held on to it. Todd thinks he's got enough of it right there. You can tell he knew he hit it good. And what a great play. Well, that's the third time he's hit the ball well today as well. Yes, it is. 
Eric Kennedy will step in. Which is outside. Kennedy's been hit by a pitch and grounded to third in his two plate appearances. Tavares is pitch outside corner. That's good tilt right there. <laughs> First one was upper in the zone and got the call. That one there, you're right. Good run, good tilt. The 0-2. Step back in. Way upstairs with some giddy up. Sounds good, then. I always like to hear that mint pop. Whether I was throwing 84 or 94. <laughs> Breaking ball gets the corner on the outside end. I don't know how many times it was 84, but uh, to be honest, I don't know how many times it was 94. <laughs> Just threw a couple numbers out there. <laughs> Zubia staying in the game here as he comes to the plate after crashing into the fence. They're trying to make an effort on a foul ball. Two quick outs for Texas here in the fifth inning. Zach has reached on a fielder's choice and lined out. Can't play baseball with music going on. Yep. They got a little music happening and they got to get it shut off. And now they do. This ain't basketball. Somebody missed the button. <laughs> Hacks at the fastball, fouls it off right side out of play. I like the effort on that hack. He went after it. Swing that bat. Junior from Richmond. The 0 1. This is filthy. This is really good <laughs> stuff we've seen so far from Monteveris. Zubia steps in 0 2. The 0 2 delivery. Frozen. Second strikeout. 1 2 3. Goes Texas in the fifth. 4 nothing horns out front. Hey. Texas baseball gets their first home weekend series off of the season here at the Dish against Boise State this weekend. Friday night, 7 Central, then Saturday at 2 Central, and then the finale Sunday at 12.30 Central Time. You can watch it all season long right here on LHN or live on the ESPN app as the Broncos of Boise State come to town. And you know what? The bullpen has been pretty good over the last couple of days. Well, you'd love to see that. The way it ended last year, bullpen wasn't at its best, but so far this year, you see eight straight shutout innings and only giving up four hits. And big thing for me out of that bullpen, just the one walk from the bullpen. Coker will lead it off. It'll be three, four, five due for Lamar here in the sixth. Coker has walked and struck out in his two plate appearances. Meany out for his third inning of work. He's been really good. Changing speeds, fastball changeup. Tried the breaking ball, struggled with the command, but that changeup makes up for it. Talk about Coming out of the bullpen, you don't need multiple pitches. Yes, it could be good if, you, if you're going to go through the lineup a few times, but if you're going to go through the lineup once, maybe one inning, two innings, to throw that fastball changeup. Had him way out in front there. It comes up with the strikeout. That is his third strikeout since coming into the game. And with the arm speed and the lack of speed on the ball, you can, you can hang it That's a hanging changeup, but everything presented itself as a fastball and got the swing and miss. J.C. Carrera will step in. 
good looking player. Obviously comes from a baseball family. Lamar 0 for 4, their last 14 since an infield single in the second inning. So Texas pitching dominating right now. 1 1 to Carrera. On the ground. Zubia has it, takes it himself. Another quick out for Meany. So what happens when you're throwing strikes? Get the off speed over the plate. Throw strikes, you're going to get quick outs. Baseman, 39 pitches. He's thrown 28 in the zone. Good outing Oof. for Owen Meany. That is a real good strike to ball ratio, isn't it? Kemp steps in. First pitch in there for a strike. Kemp, 0 for 2 in this one. He has popped up and struck out. Quickly, it's 0-2. That... Working fast? Yes. That ball strike ratio going up. The 0-2. Line to right. Todd comes on quickly. Makes a nice catch. One, two, three. Go the Cardinals here in the six. 4-0 Texas. The new left-hander. Into the game for Lamar is Dylan Johnson. He's a six foot, 170 pound sophomore from Splendora, Splendora High School, making his second appearance of the year, Zeke. And boy, he was really good in his first outing. Yeah, three and two thirds innings in his first outing. Just gave up three hits, walked a hitter, struck out three. And for Texas, the season against lefty so far haven't been well. They've only won for 16 versus left handed pitching this year. And today they were over three against the starter, but he struggled with command in the second. The Longhorns, after Lamar went to the bullpen, came up with the big knock by Austin Todd, a three-run double, and that's been the big blow of this game. Four-nothing, no runs, two hits, one miscue by Lamar. Four, three, and one for Texas. You can see the numbers right there. Left-handed pitching, Texas has struggled against. Four, five, and six do against Johnson. Here in the sixth inning. Not as much moisture coming down as we'd had earlier in the game, but it's still damp and cold. We tip our caps to those guys on the cameras out there doing a magnificent job in, in the rain today. DJ steps in. He's grounded out a couple of times once to third once to second lines this to right tell that number put a number up and then you see a change now two for 17 against left-handed pitch <laughs> jumping all over the first one from Dylan Johnson see a lot of that good good job of staying inside the ball so his hands come down, yep. made sure he stayed on top. Altini will step in. Trey on the day has walked and scored, and struck out. So he is 0 for 1. That is the third time the Longhorns in the ball game have had the leadoff batter reach base. Walked in the second, scored. Reached on a base hit in the fourth and scored. So bodes well for the Longhorn offense. Pitches upstairs. 2-0 to Trey. Lamar double play depth. Career at third, creeping in, not sure about the bunt. Not bunny. Tried to check a swing, fouled it off. The new newcomers today have reached five out of ten times. Doing their job, setting the table offensively. Two one pitch. Good one. Good location. Over the top of it. And it's two and two.
Johnson comes set. Time call. <laughs> he got him right there. Dylan Johnson missed the location. See the catch is sitting up way outside. And this ball kind of comes right back over the plate. I think it's fooled everybody. Mm, that's got it. That's close to a strike. Yes. Payoff. Misses inside ball four. Something working here for the Horns in the sixth. That'll bring Cam Williams to the plate. He scored twice. He has singled. He has walked. Off to a great start. Opposite field double last night. Drove in two runs. Tried stretching it into a triple, but that didn't work out. On a play that was re reviewed. Yes, Close play at third. Johnson looking in for his sign. Now comes set. Swing and a miss. Williams couldn't catch up to it. I think he caught Mr. Quirion on the elbow with the bat in the back swing. Yeah, you, you don't know when you play against people. Once you get to the big leagues and a catcher, you know from the hitters, you know. Uh, and some big league hitters that come to the plate for a young catcher and say, hey, I got a back swing. Careful. Got Careful. And then he gets hit in the Diane right there. Then the foul He's, ball gets. Yes, he did. Oh. What do you call? Oh, I tell you, the tools of ignorance, man. <laughs> Watch this one. This hurts. Oh, it catches it inside, catches his shin card first, and then his hand, and then down. Coach, and it's four, I, I want to play third. <laughs> yeah, it's 43 degrees. Oh. But it's 0-2. Breaking ball, did he go? Yes, he did. Good bender right there. Comes up with the first strikeout. This yes, Johnson. was Dylan Johnson throwing a little sweeper in there. Cam Williams can't hold up. Yes, he did. Hodo will step in. He's had a good day. He's walked and scored. Single to drive in a run. Checks the runners. Upstairs for ball one. The 1 0 delivery. Fouled away. Last time up. Comes to the plate. Goes hack and first pitch he sees right back through the box. Good piece of hitting. Again, drops the hands in. The sidearm sinker baller gets his RBI. Is also involved in an 8 3 6 4 6 3 5 put out. What was that? Uh, it was this. <laughs> you need to add a one to this. 8 3 6 4 6 3 5. If you dial that, I don't know, I'm sure where you're going to get it. It's a seven-digit number, but you're, you're, you're going to have Jenny. to add a one to it. Come on. Two and one to the freshman. Doug Hutto from Bernie. Upstairs, and it's three and one. Stay compact. You work to get these counts, Greg, and so many times young hitters try to do too much with it. Upstairs, ball four. Loads the bases. He sees, he sees the ball well. He's had, what, five or six walks now yeah. in the season. A couple base hits. Been on base. Horn's got him loaded again. Dixon, strikeout victim today, and it's flied to right. 
So they will come to the plate. The ball back to the mound, third and first. They'll play for two in the middle. Texas a chance to get separation in this game right here. Texas had the bases loaded in the second inning with Brendan Dixon up. One for three today with the bases loaded. I wouldn't have had a chance to be back with us a few years ago. Bullpens up and working. Got two lefties up. Imagine the one on the mound. On the left will be the one that's getting ready to come in the game. Kristen Grigsby on the right. Max Mize on the left. Backdoor break a ball in there for a strike, and quickly it's 0-2. Texas on the season, two for five with the bases loaded. One for three today. Trying to add to this 4-0 lead. Johnson comes set. Laid off of that breaking ball. One and two. Left that one upstairs, and now it's two and two. Slipped on his follow through a little bit. Slipped out of his hand. Dixon digs back in. This is that one. As a hitter, I always felt like the pitcher does not want to go 3-2 with him loaded. He's going to throw me a strike here. The 2-2. This is inside. Now it's full. It's 11th three ball count today for the Horns. Work the count back. So I would say a hitter's favorite, especially with the bases loaded. Now you got to have him get it around the plate. Last time up, he chased one out of the zone a little bit to strike out with the bases loaded, make him get it over the plate. The payoff. Fouled off right side into the stands. We'll do it again. First one we've seen on top of the J. Down Brown Performance Development Center. Oh, it came down. It did. Came back. Off the metal roof. Three two again. Downstairs, ball four. He's walked in a run. Back-to-back -back walks. Texas now leads 5-0 with a chance to really separate themselves in this ballgame. We're going to see a pitching change. Second time in the game that Texas has three walks in an inning. Sean Snitaker makes a move. We'll give the information on the new pitcher when we come back. 5 nothing Texas. CashNet U.S. begins at 9 Central after the basketball game right here on LHN and the ESPN app. As the Cardinal go to the bullpen again to bring in another left-hander, Max Mize comes into the game. He is a 5'11", 170-pound junior transfer from McClendon, County Junior College, Seven Lakes High School in Katy, Katy, Texas. Third appearance in four games for Max Mize. Three innings under his belt. Three hits, a couple strikeouts, a couple runs, just one earned for Max Mize. Got a big task right here again, Texas, with the bases loaded in one end already. Murphy Staley will come to the plate. Staley has struck out and grounded out. 0 for 2 in this one as he steps in. Top of the order, and Austin Todd awaits on deck. Three in the second, one in the fourth, one here in the sixth. Trying to add are the Longhorns. 
Oh, speed out in front for strike one. Coming out of the pen, first pitch changeup. That was a slow one, wasn't it? <laughs> My set. 0 oh, 1 delivery. Out in front again. Quickly, it's 0 oh, 2. The 0 2. To right. George has it. Tagging. Here comes the throw to the plate. Coming in to score. Teeny. And it's 6 0 Texas. Nice job right there by Murphy Staley to battle. Get the sacrifice fly. They got fooled on a couple. Able to make contact and get it deep enough. Get the RBI. Doug Hoda will go to third base in the meantime. Horns with him on the corners. It brings Austin Todd to the plate. Boy, he has wore the cover off the ball today. He's only got two base hits. He's lined to second, lined on a magnificent play by George and Wright in the fifth, but the two run, a three run double in the second, the difference in the game. Speed misses outside to Todd. Six, four, and one now for Texas. Zero, two, and one for Lamar. Gets the call. I don't know the velocity on this one because that's one of the slowest changeups we've seen. Good pitch. The 1-1. One, one. Crushed to left, but hooked foul. Showed him the fastball, pulled it foul. And time to float another one yeah, back over there. Probably gonna go away from something slow here. Mize is 1-2 to Todd. Kept it in front. Got a little help there from Mike Morris. Count evens at two and two. To center, playable. It should end the inning. The Longhorns get on the board. They put a two spot on the board at the bottom of the six. Two thirds of the game in the books. Six nothing, Texas. nice story is Will Swope a true freshman was given 14 that was his issued number it was really cool as Murphy Staley played for coach Optibelli and California Coast College and pretty cool scenario yeah, right it's, it's a, a, a great moment a, a great gesture by Will Swope and Murphy Staley's gonna wear that proud had the Altabella family here at the ball game last night so that was pretty neat to have them at the dish. It was just a great gesture by Will Swope, who's making his first appearance. First appearance is a Longhorn, freshman from the Woodlands. Popped up right side. No man's land down that left field line. 
That was up there a while. It was up there a while, you're right. It will be six, seven, and eight due for Lamar here in the seventh. Six nothing Texas. Here you on. One for two in this one. He's done a great job behind the plate. Pitches upstairs. Owen Meany was pretty good. Well, if you can feed off that outing right there by Owen Meany, wow. Three perfect innings, three strikeouts, all the lead off his innings through 42 pitches, 31 in the zone. What an outing. First outing of the year for Owen Meany. Foul back, and it's two and two now. Carry on. Whoops, 2-2. Two, two. Nice job of fighting it off. Keep the Indian bat alive. Two-two two delivery. Hit pretty well. Playable to center. Hutto on his horse. Ball fading to right. Todd ends up making the play for the first out of the inning. And not much of the breeze, but it did keep slicing towards Austin Todd out there in right field. It did look like Hutto had a, a beat on it, but it just kept fading to right. Burloff will step in. He is 0 for 2. He is struck out and grounded to short. nerves first time you come out in a new uniform dish fog field you know the emotions are running high you, you try to think well it's just like all the inner squads I've had but it's not quite the same no you have an inner squad with the lights well you have with the lights on a little bit but cameras are out the opposing team has on a different uniform you have on pinstripes got a lead the one one Upstairs. DJ's going to go out. And that's another thing. You, having DJ around, you know, through medical red shirt, a red shirt, you know, he's a veteran player. He's been around a long time. You don't have to send the pitching coach out a lot of times. You got a guy that he sees something, he can run out and make the move. I, I just think having him back is such a plus for this team. It's knowledge of the game, you know. As a young catcher, I mean, I'm sure you might have to look over and then, you know, the coach will tell you, go talk to him or something. But as a veteran catcher, you know when the time's right, when the time, well, actually when the wrong time is, and that's when the right time is to go out there. Right. We get that? I did. Okay. I've had pitchers tell me the only thing you know about hitting, it's hard, hard to Pitching is it's hard to hit. <laughs> you know, so get back behind the play. The walk. Riley will step to the plate. Third of the game for Texas pitching. It's grounded to the pitcher and grounded to the third. 0 for 2 in this one. First base runner for Lamar since the third inning. In the first three innings, they had runners in scoring position. Couldn't come up with that hit. Foul back from the count evens. Other thing with young pitchers I always felt like you make sure you come to a stop too. You know, you, you want to get in a hurry here. You come set, come set, stop. Chop foul at the plate. It's one and two. Get 
advantage of that fastball down the zone. Ground ball, get out of the inning. Work on something right here. There goes the runner into left field. Little hit and run on his way to third. Got to go back to second. Nice play right there. Keep the double play in order. First hit since the second inning for this Lamar team. Now first and third and one out. Continues a great start to the year, does Weiler. A one, two hit and run. Run and hit, maybe. Cole Gerard will step in. Eight for 14 now for Weiler on the season. Cole looking for his first knock of the year. Runners at first and third, one out. Lamar trying to get on the board. Pitch downstairs. Now I've noticed in the stretch, we've talked about this before, but Will Swope pitches from the very far first base side of the pitching rubber. The 1 0 catches the corner, and it's 1 and 1. Create angles. You create angles. He's got good movement on the fastball. It's easier for him to, to reach. That spot from that side. A lot of times, if you're back over on the third base side, now you have to throw across your body. Sometimes he feels more comfortable on that first base side. Nice job by DJ to keep that in front. You know, there are guys' natural motion, Greg, to throw across their body, and he does throw across his body a little bit, so that might help him get it more in the zone. Really pronounced downstairs. And it's three and one. Top of the order awaits on deck. A couple tossers in the bullpen for Texas right now, but not throwing with, with any purpose. Got the sweatshirts on. Three one delivery. Hit the center, deep enough, this will get the job done. Tagging, coming in to score the first run of the ball game. And it's six to one. First run the bullpen has allowed in a while. 10 innings, last 10 innings, Texas bullpen's been, well, ain't just one run in 10 innings is still throwing the ball well. Back to the top of the order. Avery George, 0 for 3 in this one as he steps in. Cam Fields getting loose down there with Sam Walbridge, the big lefty. Inside corner for a strike. 267 on the season. He's driven in a couple. 0 for 3 today, though. Made a couple of nice plays in right field today. Bender misses downstairs. The 1-1. One, one. Ripped into right center. Todd giving ground, knocks it down. George on his way to second base, relay, not in time. Second and third. The Cardinals making a little push here in the top of the seventh. That's a nice play by Austin Todd to give ground to get to this on a slick field. Played the angle at it, good hustle out of the box. 
right there from Avery George. It looked like he had a different angle, but once it skipped, he had to take a different look at it. Held the runner at third. Yeah, if you take a bad angle there, though, you give up a run there. That run from That's first. a run and a triple. Yeah. We're going to have a pitching change. That's the big left-hander, Walbridge. Sam Walbridge will be coming into the ball game, making his first appearance for the Longhorns. We'll be back with more information after this message. First home weekend series of the year here at the Dish against Boise State Broncos starts Friday night, 7 Central, then Saturday at 2 Central, and then the finale Sunday at 12.30. You can watch Longhorn Baseball all season long right here on LHN or live on the ESPN app. Bryce Elder will get the ball on Friday night. Another young left-hander we get to see right here. Yeah, big 6'5", 200 pounds, Sam Walbridge out of San Antonio, fastball, slider, slurvy type breaking ball that can reach up to 93 miles an hour, but the big body frame slings it in there. St. Mary's Hall in San Antonio, where he pitched in high school. He comes on here to face a guy that's hit the ball as hard as you can hit it today. Durant, Reese, tripled in the first, lined out in the third and lined out in the fifth. Runners at second and third. 6-1 ball game. Base hit right here. Makes this a ball. Get, could it get interesting? A couple of fellows that thought they might have the night off might not have the night off You're with right. base hit. Duran steps in. Lefty-lefty matchup. Walbridge comes set. Upstairs with the fastball. Six hits. He's driven in four this season. So Duran as he steps back in. Ooh, didn't get the call there. Close. Now at 2-0. As a left-hander, facing a left-hander, you sort of negated that advantage because yeah, you got to look fastball. You got to look fastball. You're the hitter. Catches the corner, and it's two and one. That's a tough one to hit right there. Got to be looking away. Walbridge comes set, checks the runners. 2-1 delivery. Upstairs, and it's 3-1. and one. Catches the corner again, and it counts full. So you got a challenge right here. Yeah. W with the count, you still have the three-run lead, a base hit. I mean, if you give up a base hit, you still have a three-run lead. So the payoff. Rip foul. Left side. Just fought that off. Didn't have a good hack at it. <laughs> Payoff again. Outside ball four. May have a pinch hitter here. Seacrest, Cole Seacrest will be the pinch hitter. Six foot, 190 pound junior from the Woodlands. You think these? Nope. Will Swope would have known. Wait. Cole Seacrest. He comes on as the pinch hitter. Base is loaded. Here comes David Pearson. He may be making a move to the bullpen right now himself. Yep. 
He is headed that way. Little matchup baseball going on right here. Well, there's times when you bring the younger, the, the freshman in, and you want him to throw strikes. You want him to see what the bullpen has done up to this point and continue to do that. Again, another learning, teaching moment right there to talk to the freshman. You know, when you, if you, when you have young guys, you've got to put them, that's what these games early in, in February and early March are for, is to find out how, how guys fit into certain, how do they handle pressure, how do they handle this scenario? And his first action right there, second and third, yeah. two outs. And not a really pressure-packed moment, but enough for making your first appearance as a Longhorn. You come in second and third. You got a lefty coming up. You want to get him out. You just try to overthrow a little bit. You have emotions. You're trying. You're trying to calm yourself down out there, but also at the same time, David Pierce can't let this game get away from him. Yeah, and then the, the other part of it, folks, for me is that you've got some veteran guys that you want to sort of say because this is a eight games in 10 day stretch. Yeah, Texas bullpen has been throwing well, so they've saved some arms last night, tried to, trying to save some more tonight. Not sure what the situation is going to be right now. Got Andre Duplantier coming in the ball game for Texas. So yeah, with a lot of games, I mean, after tonight, you still have four in, in five days. So need a lot of arms and need a lot of arms that can be extended. Yeah, yeah, you've got Boise coming in. There's, you know, for three, you have a game next Tuesday. And then right after that, you go to Minute Maid, and you got LSU, Arkansas, Missouri on the schedule on the road in the Minute Maid Classic. Yeah, that's that's no cakewalk right there. You're going to have to be ready for that weekend in Houston. Palantier well, comes in, really threw the ball well in his first outing from Humble in Houston. Is been able to throw the ball right now. He's had surgery on a hammock bone in his hand. He's a good offensive player, too, and can play a lot of different positions. But on the, on the glove hand. Yeah, it's on the glove hand, so it allows him to come in. And boy, the ball just jumps out of this young man's hands. Well, we got the situation. Base is loaded. Two outs. 6-1 Texas lead here. Top of the seventh inning, one across for Lamar. Seacrest will remain in the game here. Righty, righty matchup. Dre, as he is nicknamed. Pitched over the weekend in Houston. Couple games. Couple of games. In there for a strike. See Chris steps back in. The 0-1. Good bender. That's a sharp bender right there. Way ahead in the count right here. I don't change nothing. I think he gets a chance to see one again. You don't want to try to be fancy and think you can sneak one by him. He made him look silly right there with that breaking ball. The 0-2. Got him. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night with them loaded. Did a great job right there. Yeah, bases loaded up four, up five. This could be a game changer right there. Andre Duplantier gets out of the inning. One Texas lead game in the rain most of the time. Big blow in the ball game. Austin Todd's opposite field three run double in the second inning separated the ball game, but none bigger than the out just recorded right there. Six one game, but a base hit right there with them loaded or an extra base hit. And all of a sudden it's a six four ball game. It changes everything. You're right. Duplantier comes in the ball game with the bases loaded, gets a huge strikeout. 
to end the inning, keep the five run lead, continue pitching well out of the bullpen as the Texas bullpen has. Grigsby, the fourth left-hander of the game for Lamar, comes in. Fourth lefty making his second appearance of the season, just one-third of an inning. In League City, Texas, 5'11", 165-pound left-hander. Catches the outside corner, and quickly he's a hit 0-2. One run, four hits, one miscue for Lamar. Six runs, four hits, one miscue for Texas. Grigsby's 0-2 delivery. Breaking ball stays inside. And it's one and two. Eric 0 for two. He was hit by a pitch. It's only time he's reached base. That back in the first inning. Fights it off, keeps the at bat alive. The one two delivery. Four left handers out of the bullpen for Lamar. Fastball misses upstairs. You and I have talking off air about where are all the left handed pitchers. Lamar may have them all. They right? have them all. Don't Four they? out coming out of their bullpen. The 2 2 to Kennedy. You can see it bat a lot. Fight set off. Day off tomorrow for Texas, and then 7 o'clock Friday night. Seventh pitch of the at bat coming here. Is Excited to see the Broncos at Boise State. First Division I season since 1980. Pokes it to left. Playable. Durant does a nice job coming up with it right up against the wall. So one gone here for Texas in the seventh. That brings Zubia to the plate. Reached on a fielder's choice. Was robbed on a ball he hit to right. Really nice play and it struck out. So he's 0 for 3 as he steps in. Can't really say enough of what we've seen so far. Early indication from Zach, the ability to play first base. It's been impressive. Yeah, he has. Moving around well. Seen him get the, pick the ball out of the turf a couple of times. Footwork is good. He's done a nice job. Top of the order for Texas in these two midweek mid games yet last night and this afternoon. Top of the order struggle. Two for 19. 0-2 to Zach's upstairs. The one-two delivery. Had him guessing right down Broadway. First strikeout for Grigsby. Yep. Not sure what you could be looking for right there. I mean, recognized fastball. That was right down the middle. I just got to be looking, think you're going to get a breaking ball. Zach knew it right away. You know, pitchers, you sometimes you overthink about what pitch to throw. Hitters do the same thing. Oh, They're, yeah. You know, yeah. they overthink about what they. Sometimes you used to say to myself, see ball, hit it. Just, be, just you know. DJ steps in, gets grounded to third, grounded to second, single to right. So he's one for three on the day. One-oh delivery. Downstairs, and it's two and oh. So it's be a no weather on Friday, but cool evening. Yeah, seven o'clock start in the 50s will be the high over the weekend. Oh, back 
to the screen. First weekend series of the year for the night. dish. Two and one to DJ. and look at different points of this game. And Texas have had a couple opportunities really blow it open. They have a five-run lead, but they've had a chance to put this thing away. And Lamar just hanging around a little bit. They were a hit right there from really closing the gap. Yeah, hit the right spot. It's a two-run ball game. 2-2 two -two pitch. Fouled off right side out of play. Texas, Texas had him loaded in the second with no outs. Eventually got the big double from Austin Todd, but that could have really broken open early in that inning. Did not do it, and then had the bases loaded again in the sixth. Got a couple out of it. Grigsby's 2 2. Upstairs. Count goes full. The payoff. Hit pretty well to left, but playable. Duran over into left center. Puts it away. One, two, three goes Texas in the seventh. JC Carrera will lead it off. We come back for Lamar. Six one Texas lead as we go to the top of the eighth. Silas Ardwan comes in. To the ball game, brother plays for Lamar. Drew, brother S Drew. Saw his dad here earlier to the, at the ballpark. Silas into the game, big knock last night. Opposite field. Double, changed the game. Plantier out for his first full inning of work. Came on and got a big strikeout to end the threat in the seventh. He'll be facing J.C. Carrera. Seven hits on the season for J.C. Right back to the mound. Easy play, 1-3 on the putout. Brothers. Looking on. You know, Drew would like to get up there with Brother Silas behind the plate. That'd be kind of neat. Kemp steps in. Drew says he can still whoop him, though. Ooh. That's what we heard. Brothers. Kemp down 0-2. Dre has come in filling it up. As most of the bullpen has done this season. Ouch, went off the pad. Well, earlier in the game earlier this week, Drew, it, it, you hate to look at this. It's, it's really funny it, it, because he ended up scoring. That's the only reason yeah, that it's I mean, still funny. He's hustling, yeah. He's hustling. He rounds second. Here he comes around third. He's coming in to score, and then the turf monster gets him. Tumbling, going forward. Where's the ball? But the catcher drops the ball, and he scores anyway. <laughs> uh, you laugh because it's happened to all of us on the field at some point. He's, he's okay, and he was safe. Yeah, so it means nothing. Runner at first. Carrion will step in. Singled, struck out, fly to right. As Anthony. Popped up back. 
behind. One and one. Looking for a ground ball here. Breaking ball, catches the corner. Well, that's a good one. Even the one that, that he hit Kemp with was, was tight and late. It just broke, it broke too much right into the shin guard pad there. Chop foul. He's got some sink too with this fastball. And it gets up on you. You can, you can see the hitter's reaction to it. Everything Greg, is you, you, everything's nice and fluid. Yeah. There are radars, guns that say, oh, this guy throws hard. And then there's those guys that the radar gun doesn't light up, but as a hitter, it just wow, that ball's up on top of me. Did he go? Yes, he did. Throw the first. Not in time. But it's a strikeout at the plate. Zach was there, just not at the moment the ball got to first. You see the breaking ball not close. Dawn does a great job of getting it. He sweeps around but does not tag the runner. So two outs now. Perloff will step in. Logan struck out, grounded out, and walked. 0 for 2 in the ball game. The other part that I always watch is how many swing and miss fastballs do you throw? Those quite a few of those. Well, it's, it's tough to pick up. Talking to some of the Texas hitters that have faced him in their squad, tough to pick up. It gets on you in a hurry because of that. The reaction time slows down. And it's pretty good stuff. Good fastball, good break of ball. Got him set up for a bender right here. Let's see what he goes to. Tried to overthrow that one. You can't force it. When, when you have a good one, you try to force it. That's going to happen. You either leave it up top or you throw it wide. We got the swing. We got the strikeout before. The one, two. Lift that one up. Rip down the left field line. Come set, one, two delivery, fouled away. Pretty good at bat right here. Lighting off a couple of good pitches. Yeah, left him up, able to foul him off. So he goes back, we'll call it a snapdragon. Go back to that snapdragon right here. Shook it off, now settled on what he wants. Upstairs with the fastball. And the count goes even at two and two. Burlop, 167 on the year. He's driven in a run. 0 for 2 today. Good breaking ball there. Did he go? He did not. The count goes full. Runner will be off with the pitch here. Correct call. Did not go around. I did not see the barrel of the bat cross the plate. Hands did, but the barrel did. I like the way Silas Ardwan sold it, though. You got to come up. You got to try to sell it. Kip is off. 
They're gonna call that a foul ball, aren't they? Off of the off of the handle. And not shaking that hand too much for getting if it gets hit. You know, I, chance to see it right there. I think that can't got him off the, the wrist more than it did. He's not wincing. Too He's much. not wincing though. They might go look at this. Go review this. Have an opportunity, a chance to look at it again here. But you know, the the knob is is there, and it's part of the bat, so that would be a foul ball. But it, if it hits your hand, it's hit by pitch, even though your hands are right there on the knob. But he didn't react like something with that velocity hit him in the hand. Right, you would think he would he would have shook his hand a little bit more. He's still not shaking it. I mean, if he got hit, I think you would be in a little more pain. Six-one ball game here. It's a bunch here. You get a chance to slow it down again as this ball comes riding in right there. Still can't, can't tell. Can't tell from that angle. See if we can see it here in slow as it slows down. Still can't tell. Can't tell. I, there's no definitive answer for me. I just don't know if it if it hits the wrist, if it makes that angle as it jumps off. Because it kind of took off up to the left. did not wince like it hit him in the back of the hand. The knob coming up. I don't know if there's enough to overturn this. Get the call here shortly. They're going to say that the ball hit the knob of the bat. Not enough to overturn it. Nope. Still a full count. Want to get it right? That's why they have the review. And it was just not enough for me to see that you could overturn that. Right. We'll do it again. Three, two. Downstairs, ball four. All of a sudden, Lamar again with an opportunity. Runners at first and second. Weiler will step in. They've been their best offensive player all season long. He's eight for 14 on the year. He's driven in four. Singled his last time up. First six innings. Texas, just with two free passes, they've had four in the last two innings. Lamar over five with runners in scoring position today. And Sean Allen going to go out. Quick visit. The entire infield comes together. Make sure everybody's on the same page of what we're going to do. Stay tuned to us right here on LHN. After baseball, we go across the street, I-35 to the Irwin Center as TCU comes to town. You can see Andrew Jones there getting ready. And watch it right here on LHN. We'll get you there as soon as this ball game is over. Jones averaging 10 and a half points a game for the Longhorns. Looking for healthy bodies right now. Yeah, they are. Breaking ball, had him out in front for strike one. Well, that was more of the tighter one right there. Didn't have the loop to it. Runners at first and second here. 0 1 count. Had him out in front again. Got a piece out. Quickly, it's 0-2. Do you change anything? I got to keep throwing that one. Right? I I, I wouldn't change anything. Got a couple swinging misses with it. I'm catching you, Zeke. I'm saying we're going to throw that again until you shake me. I'm starting my windup already. The 0-2. Got him. Three breaking balls in a row. Dante gets out of it and ends the threat for the Cardinals here in the eighth. 6 1 Texas. We go to the bottom of the eighth.
I've got one. Just, uh, there's something I put down on paper. Running. Running. Hold the ball. Hit the hole. Defensive back. Too small. Little guy. Boom! Those are friends. Boom! Boom! Heart's breaking. Touchdown! Touchdown! Touchdown. Woo! Touchdown, Ricky Faye! Yeah! Woo! Woo! At Gritty. He goes out there and gives you his all every single time. I like to use the word lethal on the mound. He loves to compete and you love playing behind a guy like that. He's gonna go out there and just work for you and try to give you his best stuff regardless. Swing and a miss, tied him up. Elder the stretch and a 3-2 pitch. Strike three call, got him working. This year I feel like he commands all three pitches really well. He seems to be a little more comfortable. Um, he also seems to be more of a leader amongst all the pitchers. He uh, really works hard to lead by example more than lead by words. Outstanding on Friday night at Rice. You can see he is that one of those guys that you put on Friday night. It comes after you. Second team all Big 12 last year, but you, you look at that, he just got very little run support. I mean, he just, <laughs> so, but he has been brilliant uh, to start on Friday night. Oh yeah, he's reliable. You know, he's gonna give you six, seven innings. Pretty much every time he goes out there, oh, I like, you know, you, you love it as a teammate when you hear what your your teammates have to say about you. And he, he, he's not a big vocal guy. You couldn't tell by that piece right there because he, he's talking the entire time. But he does like to get his work in. And when he gets, to, gets out there on Friday nights, he's all business. Yeah, he'll have the ball Friday night, 7 o'clock. We'll have it for you right here on LHN. Crater comes into the game out of the bullpen. See Brandon from Nederland, six foot, 182 pound sophomore. Comes on. Tini takes the 2 0 pitch for a strike. Bottom of the eighth, 6 1 Texas Lee. Tini on the night, has walked, struck out, and walked. Foul back out of play. 0 for 1 on the night. It's 2 and 2. The 2 2. This is inside. A full count to Trey. Calls time. Steps back in. The left field for a base hit. Lead off single. First to the night. Altini has scored twice, and now another leadoff base runner for Texas. Two, two got the fastball. You want it? Not trying to do too much. Shoots it in the five hole. Gets him a knock. Cam Williams has scored twice. He has singled, walked, and scored. Singled and scored. And struck out. So he's one for two as he steps in. Bottom of the order has done most of the damage for Texas here tonight. Back out of play. Duke Ellis is out in the on deck circle. Looks like he will be pinch hitting here. Time call by Mike Morris, the home plate umpire. We see Ellis, senior, from Nacogdoches. In the on deck circle. He did not swing. If he swings at this, interesting call right here. If you if he felt like he'd swung at the ball, even though it hit him, it's a strike. It's a strike. But I think he followed through just trying to get out of the way of it. Yeah. That's what it made it look like he swung at it. So runners now at first and second after the hit batsman. Pitch hitting. Duke Ellis. Duke. 
Ellis off to a really good start this season. Did not start tonight's ball game. Numbers overall, 6,280 pounder from Nacogdoches. 400 on the year. Six hits. Scored four times. He's got a stolen base. Squares pulls the bat back. This is downstairs for ball one. We talked about Coach Pierce. He doesn't use the bunt very often except first and second. It wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised to see Ellis put it down here. He does. Good one. Going to be a tough play. Can they get Ellis at first? Yes, they do. Sacrifice goes one three on the put out. The runners move up 90 feet. Just out towards Crater slightly. He's able to get to it barehanded. He had to in a hurry with Duke's speed. Getting down that line just in time. That'll bring Brendan Dixon to the plate. Dixon has walked, flied out, struck out. Infield having to come to the plate, so they move up. Try to cut the run off at the plate. Filled up, out of the stretch. Breaking ball, misses outside for ball one. The 1-0 delivery. Breaking ball, in there for a strike. Would have fooled me, I would have been looking fastball there. <laughs> Good breaking pitch right there by Crater. Right hander comes set. 1-1 one, one delivery. Popped up. Coming in is the right fielder, George. He has it. Throw comes to the plate. That's a big out. Try to get out of the inning. That's always a, a difficult play when the infield's drawn up because it wasn't that far out there and he actually caught it just outside of the infield. Mason Bryant getting loose. Looks like he might be in for the ninth. Staley steps in. Murph, 0 for 3, actually 0 for 2. And Foul tip there, that ball gets away, but he did make contact. Sacrifice fly, he's driven in a run. His last at bat. Good slider that time, catches the corner. Quickly it's 0-2. That's a tight little breaking ball right there. Tight little beard, too. I like that. O2 delivery. Upstairs. It's one and two. Craig, did you, after you got an out like that, did you, did you go back to the windup or did you stay in the stretch? I stayed in the stretch. I've been in that position now for probably, you know, 15 pitches or so. Feel more comfortable. Yeah. The one, two. Nice job of knocking that down. Count evens at two and two. Well, I, I was in the windup with a runner on third, my very first big league start, and I fell for the, the, the deke. Balked him in, and I never went from the windup again <laughs> with the with runners on third. <laughs> Fool me once. Because if I went from the stretch, I couldn't see him. Breaking ball, didn't get the call. Came back, didn't get the call. Austin Todd awaits on deck. Staley has worked it back from 0-2 to 3-2.
the payoff. Got it into left center. Duran over, makes the play, and that ends the inning. Longhorns threaten in the eighth, but come up empty. We go to the ninth. 6-1 Texas lead. We go to the top of the ninth, 6-1 Texas lead. One run, four hits, one miscue for Lamar. 6-5 and one for Texas. And the Longhorns go to the bullpen again to get sophomore right-hander, 6-5, 215-pound right-hander from a Callum High School right here in Austin. Greg, what can you tell us about Mason? Well, he's got a big arm. We know that. We've seen the fastball get up in the mid-90s. The breaking ball is really good. He's just had... A little trouble with command. You saw last year the 14 walks in the 10 and two thirds innings. So if he could command that really good fastball, he can be really effective. He doesn't have the type of arm, in my opinion, that should have that type of ERA. If you can, can command the fastball in the mid 90s, you should have success. Well, you look at it. Uh, let's just let's just look at the Texas bullpen has been outstanding, really. All, all year long so far. Right, all I mean, five so, games. They've, 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 they've thrown the ball well, and you have to have that early in the season because your starters aren't going to go eight, nine innings. Uh, their first couple starts, first few starts. Um, nowadays, I mean, it, it's co complete games. You, you have good bullpens, and that's why you can bring them in, and when you can win games early in the seasons, it's mainly because the bullpens are effective. Mason will be facing the 9-1-2 hitters. Gerard. Gerard will step in. Gerard sacrificed flies last time up. 0 for 2 with an RBI. Bryant's first pitch in there for a strike. Duke Ellis remains in the game. He's in center. Came on to pinch hit. Got the sacrifice bunt. Out in center field. Here in the ninth, the 0-1. Both of those pitches, good spot. Great tilt on them. Down, down in the zone. One in. One away. Gerard didn't think that was a strike. You could see that look that he sort of had there. The guy dressed in blue said it was. Just gets a piece of it. Did he? That's a foul ball. <laughs> Mike Morris wasn't indicating anything. Uh, you know, the, 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 the interesting part of that is Silas Arduan he went, went after, after it right. like like he didn't hear it. He didn't he didn't think it was a foul ball. But he calls it foul and it remains 0-2. The 0-2 again upstairs, Mason. Don't forget, we'll get you right across the street to the Irwin Center. Local window, Lance Blanks. As the Longhorns are taking on TCU as soon as this ball game is over. Chop back to the mound. Bryant flips to Zubia. 1-3 on the putout for the first out of the inning. Avery George will step in. George doubled his last time up, one for four. He's been outstanding in right field. A couple really good plays yes, out there. Yes. One crashing into the wall. Breaking ball stays upstairs. And it's one and oh. Yes. Those that are tuning in for basketball, you can find it on ESPN News right now. We will be joining it as soon as this ball game is over. So we will get you updated. It is underway across the street at the Irwin Center. The ESPN app. You can always catch it on the app. Yes, you can. Breaking ball is there, one and two. That was a good, tight breaking ball from Bryant. Or slider cutter. 
George steps back in. The one, two. Reaches out, just pokes it to right. Going back. Dixon couldn't come up with it. Tried to reach up, looking back into the sun. He was sliding and reaches up, caught it on the palm of his hands. Yeah, maybe an ill-advised slide right there. Looked like he had plenty of room. Started a slide right there. Caught him in the palm and trickled away from him. So a one-out base runner. See how they call that. Tell Dixon upset himself that he didn't come up with the ball. Durant steps in. He has struck the ball well tonight. Tripled in the first, lined out twice and walks. So he is one for three. Swings and misses that one. Longhorns a double play depth in the infield. I would think maybe the distance that Dixon had to go and then the slide at the end and possibly a base hit. Pull this foul into the dugout. Look out. Shot Sean Allen. Allen. <laughs> <laughs> Coming your way. Don't expect the lefty to pull it. Not that much. Right there. <laughs> wow. See him right there. He's coming. He's trying his best. Keep it away from him. And Vinny. There as well. The 0-2. Ripped by Zubia. Into right. George on his way to third. On his way to second is Durant. Runners at second and third here with one out. Never seen over a course of five at bats, one walk that a guy hit the ball as hard as Durant has tonight. Well, he, he has to smash this. Zubia right there, couldn't get down to it, just holding the runner. So it'll be runners second and third. I'm not sure they could have hit an error on that. We'll have to wait and see, but runners are second and third here with one out. I think that's a double, too. I mean, with Zach playing in, that ball was hit hard. Not time enough to catch it. Got right by him. You now Sean Allen will mosey out to the mound. Have a conversation with Mason Bryant. Runners at second and third here. Cole Seacrest is the scheduled hitter. He is out taking his warm-up swings. There is activity. Again in the Texas bullpen. Donnie Diaz on the right. Jared Southern on the left. Donnie Diaz has been really good. Two appearances, two saves. I love the nickname. The Silent Assassin. Silent Assassin. <laughs> yeah, great one to have. See Chris steps in. He's looking for his first hit of the year. He came on as a pinch hitter. Infield back for Texas here. One out, protecting a five-run lead in the top of the ninth. Misses downstairs for ball one. Outfield straight away. Not very deep with the wind blowing in. Infield back. Take the out at first and surrender the run. The 1-0. This is outside, and it's 2-0 to Seacrest. The 2-0. Upstairs, and it's 3-0. Getting interesting. J.C. Carrera. Best players in the Southland in the on deck circle. Bryant's 3 0 delivery in there for a strike. Bryant's 3 1. Catches the corner. 
The count goes full. The payoff. Got him. Foul tipped into the glove. The second out of the inning. That was a big out. Yeah, it is. Good job by Mason Bryant coming back from 3 0. You're getting pitches that are close, not getting called, not getting frustrated, and come right back and get the strikeout. Career has reached on an era. Grounded out twice, 0 for 3, and walked. Outside for ball one. Hit pretty well. Ellis has a beat on it. This should do it, and it does. Longhorns find a way to win it. It wasn't easy at the end, but they found a way to get it done. Well, bullpen has thrown well. They came in, and uh, Andre Duplantier did a great job of getting out of a situation that could have changed the entire ball game. So uh, the pitching, timely hitting again. I mean, they all did great today. Final score, Texas 6, Lamar 1. For our entire crew, Greg Swindell, I'm Keith Moreland. We enjoyed it. Let's send you across the street to the Irwin Center to Lance and Lowell.